How worried should we be about this cosmetic space? Last week, Ulta Beauty hit us with some negative commentary, talking about how demand is waning, softer. Well, I suspect they're just dealing with more competition now that Kohl's has gone all in with Sephora store within a store. But what about Elf? Elf Beauty, that's the value-oriented cosmetics play that's long been one of my favorite growth stocks. If you know, we liked it since the teens. Back in February, they reported a stellar quarter, and the stock still has got hit because it had run up dramatically going into earnings, like I talked about at the top of the show. I told you it was a buy. And sure enough, it rebounded from 164 to an all-time high of 221 and changed less than a month later. However, Elf has now pulled back to around 170, and I think that's in part because of this horrific Ulta commentary. So is this another buying opportunity? Is really something wrong? with the category, with the company. Let's take a closer look with Tarang Amin. He is the chairman and CEO of Elf Beauty. Hey, Mr. Amin, welcome back to Mad Money. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, first of all, let's start before we get to the Ulta comments. Today was a very important day because the Piper Sandler teen survey came out. It's something that has made me and uh, the charitable trust of mine consistent money for a long time. What did they show? Your brand is the for younger generations. You continue your dominance. Number one cosmetic brand for the cohort for the fifth survey in a row. 38% of the teens earned your company, uh, named your company as the favorite cosmetics brand. That's up 16 points from the previous period. How are you doing this? This is just, you are not the biggest. You are not the wealthiest. You are certainly not the most well-known. How is this happening? Well, I think it's a continuation of what's driven our entire strategy. Our value proposition, powerhouse innovation, marketing engine continues to propel our growth. And amongst teens, as you said, 38% mind share. The next highest brand was 9%, so we continue to get stronger. But we're also pulling in other age uh, cohorts, and so we feel really great about the progress and how, how healthy our business is. Millennials, Gen X, how are you doing? We're doing great. We're picking up consumers in millennials, Gen X, Latinx, really across the board. It really re reflects the strength we have in delighting and entertaining our community. All right. Now, when I've met you or your unbelievable team, uh, they always have had a time where the stock does take an air pocket. And there's always people shooting at you. And, and, and I think it's just because there's people who've been betting against you forever, as you and I both know. And you have just told me, don't pay any attention. And that has been the right course of action. No, absolutely. And in fact, if you look in the last quarter, our business continues to perform exceptionally well in Nielsen track channels uh, in the quarter. We just passed L'Oreal Paris for the number two ranking at 12.8% share, up 300 basis points. And as good as that is, I'm even more encouraged by if you look at our business at our longest standing national retail customer, Target, where we've been their number one brand for a while, in the last quarter, we accounted for 23% of their entire category sales. So I'm quite bullish on our prospects of continuing to be able to double our share in color cosmetics and perhaps even have a bigger opportunity in skincare with two of the fastest growing brands there and international, which are also growing extremely well, fast. Now you're talking about going against Estee Lauder, the fact you're past L'Oreal Hills amazing. But what I love, I have taken an actual measurement to Target shelf. That's extraordinary. You are nowhere near that amount of shelf space. So you're clearly crushing it, which brings me to Ulta's comments. You and I both know, we, we, Dave Kimball's fantastic, okay, just point blank, and I've liked Ulta forever, from when Mary Dillon was there. He did say that the category had softened, and that brought a lot of people down, a lot of your companies down. I wonder whether, given the fact that, uh, that Tom Kingsbury's running Coles, and he's monster good, LVMH is Sephora. Uh, you just mentioned the target numbers. It's entirely possible that what's happened is things have gotten a little bit tougher for Ulta. Well, you know, we feel great about our partnership with Ulta. I've long been bullish on the beauty category, and I continue to be so. Uh, Dave went out of his way to talk about how ELF is really driving a lot of growth for them in the category. And, you know, we see the same thing at Ulta as we see with other customers. ELF is their most productive brand. It's measured by dollar sales per linear foot. We're the most productive brand at Target, at Walmart, at Ulta, internationally with, uh, with Superdrug and Boots. Uh, so we continue to resonate, and I feel we have a great opportunity to continue to take share. I want to nail this down. Uh, you have seen no softness in your business in this period. Well, we've uh, we just finished the quarter right. and a few weeks away from reporting, so I can't I can't talk the specific guidance. But our business uh, has never been stronger, and you can see it in the share gains we continue to have, not only in color cosmetics, but also skincare. We're one of the fastest growing skincare brands in the U.S. right now, and we have tremendous potential 
And we're seeing strength really across the board, not only in national retailers, but our digital business last quarter was up over 100%. Our international business was up over 100%. So we continue to execute extremely well. I'm very proud of the team and our ability to continue to gain share. Excellent. Now, speaking of digital, you have actually experimented with new ways to reach customers, including the uh, Apple Vision Pro taking advantage of the 3D capabilities. How has that worked? And is it something that is uh, that you think is more than a passing fancy, this Vision Pro? Well, our approach as a digitally native brand is we're constantly testing and learning. We're one of the first beauty brands on TikTok. We have our own channel on Twitch. We actually have right now the best branded experience on Roblox, over 9 million plays in just a few months. So the Apple Vision Pro is a continuation of we're going to constantly test and learn on new frontiers and delight our community and be having the first beauty shopping app on the Vision Pro. We're learning a ton, and, and I think it, it just shows like what we're capable of doing. Is it producing or is it just good for, uh, let's say, uh, naming purposes? Well, I think it's, it's, it's important for us as an innovator to continue yes. to learn, continue to try new things. And so it's part of that. And that's really where we've gotten a lot of our success. We're not dependent on any one platform or any one way of going to market. We really look for ways that continue to delight our community. Yeah, I'm not asking you to pick on any competitor because that's not your style. But uh, the others have seriously not embraced your, uh, your digital strategy, your kind of a digital native strategy. Uh, are you ever afraid that they will wake up one day and say, you know what, this guy's in all these different channels, maybe we got to be like him? Well, I mean, they can try. We, we have about a 20-year head start on that, and we continue to innovate. So I feel, you know, it's a real area of strength for us. If I look at our elfcosmetics.com business, it's really fueled by the 4.5 million Beauty Squad loyalty members we have, a real rich source of first-party data that makes our marketing better. We're one of the fastest-growing brands on Amazon. I mean, I think we have a really broad digital platform, and we continue to invest in it. Well, uh, our household uses you almost... <laughs> Almost exclusively after you convinced my wife to try it without her knowing, because I switched the brands around. I want to thank Tara Eman, who is the chairman and CEO of Elf Beauty. Mr. Mean, it's great to see you on the show. As always, thank you for your help. Well, thank you so much. All right, man, buddy's back after the break. Coming up, don't just hang with Fang. Kramer pulls out the sharpest small caps of Silicon Valley next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.